Hey, happy Easter, Star Up, Passover. (laughs) This is our, in case anybody had too many peeps, is in a sugar induced coma. Had problems yeah. This is our Easter hangover show, and we're very mm. thrilled with our own very own Easter buddy, Greg, of course. Hi. Too many mushrooms. I have risen. <laughs> <laughs> and we're very thrilled, very thrilled to have back. And he might have brought a special guest that we'll talk about later. I don't know for sure yet, but hopefully we can get him in. But we're the one, the only, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Billy, Billy McKee. McKee. Well, thank you. Thank you You know, you as soon as your much. name was Billy, I just had to use uh, yeah. that. <laughs> I love I love Easter, you know. It's like uh, Jesus was the uh, original zombie, right? I mean, he was the very first, was right? Yeah, more or less. I mean, Sam Kennison used to say so. He he had a bit about it. Was like, you know, he's the only guy who can rise from the dead and not scare the hell out of everybody. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you think believe that? (laughs) You know. Do you have like a favorite Easter movie since you brought that up? <laughs> well, um, what the or ten, cartoon, the, the Ten Commandments. They play that one every year, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, that was on yesterday. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, yeah, I always. Vincent Price is the evil, like slave master guy, which is awesome. Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. even know. You Me know, either. it's it's, I, it's, it's been been about a small part. He's a small part. Yeah. Yeah. So but, what did Joe Cocker say in his live album? Don't get hung up on Easter. Didn't he say that? I mean, Mad Dog's an Englishman. Did, did Which, he say that? I don't yeah. remember. I don't know why, but I thought he said something about Easter. On there. Right. I don't yeah. know. But you were talking about, before we jump all around on here, about mm-hmm. these cool re-releases, and you guys are talking about a little. Yeah, well, I've been uh, trolling Amazon. <clears throat> Never give me an Amazon card, folks. So I'll tell you that right now. So, But, no, it's really neat. There's... um. I got a cheap trick set. That's a whiskey whiskey a go go set from the from seventy seven. So, you know what and, that's and called the, the actual name of the CD because I'd like to look that one up and get it for myself. It's just the cheap trick at the whiskey seventy seven. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. It's a white black and white cover. And then the I got the humble pie one rocking the Fillmore all four shows. So that was really neat. And that's a Japanese import, I guess. But that one is really cool because I've listened to two of the four discs so far, and it's it's interesting because, you know, they they're all the same tunes each show, but the boy the the improv sections are all completely different, and a lot of stage banter that you know you because you get so used to hearing the one record sure for forty years. And that's the, that's the best part of the live show, you know. Yeah. I mean, is that uh, the improv parts? At least that's my favorite part of. Uh, and then that the cool thing is, is they switch it up every night. Humble Pie, right? Right. And the same thing with that cheap trick. It's like there's a few different songs here and there, but they'll play the songs kind of the same but kind of different. And I mean, and, and what I like about that album is it's warts and all. Like Xander's voice goes out a couple times because mm-hmm. he's t- straining. Yeah, but but it's all there, you know, and it's all there's not a lot of sweetening in those albums, which I Raw. like. Yeah. yeah, Don Felder would say that about the problem with Don Hanley was always they call him the guano bat. Yeah, that you were to play live note mm. for note of the album. Right, and I think people want to see the improv, but if you want to listen to the album, just stay at home. Right. And my thing about live albums too is like, okay, like I love Tom Petty, but I just got his Fillmore album, which is really good, but his live album. There's a blank, but it's like they're like record tracks. Yeah. You know, it fades out. Sure. You know, I want to hear like there's a Joni Mitchell album live album where she starts. She goes, "Oh, let's start over. This was bad." I was talking right. to somebody the other day, a, a sound engineer or somebody. I can't remember now who it was, but he told me that they have these deals where they run them under the stage and they supply tracks to the band or the, to the performers, and it's like totally. It's not BS, but it's just like it's it, depending on the act, I guess. They just dance to the tracks or whatever it is, or they they're helping tracks. Well, now there's tracks. all these big controversies, quote unquote, air quotes about backing tracks or people aren't playing or singing yeah. or mm-hmm. everything else. You know, but what do you can do? But we recently just had St. Patrick's Day. What has the little leprechaun here been doing for St. Patrick's Day? <laughs> what were you doing this well, year? what I was doing uh, right directly after the parade. Um, I played at the, uh, the the Hyatt downtown, oh. uh, which was a great built-in crowd. You know, right. I mean, people f- just filled the place up. Uh, right before I started playing, they had the pipers come in, the Keystone uh, piping mm-hmm. band with the drums and everything. It was oh, phenomenal. Yeah, cool. 
And then the second they they ended, I was on the mic saying, "Let's hear it for them." And then I played for until they kicked me out of there. Yeah, you know, basically. No, <laughs> no, but it was a great gig. Uh, they put me up in the hotel and you know gave me free free beer all night. And uh, even when I was done playing, they, I went up to the bar. They said, "Oh yeah, you." You're that would be the act like for the Irish songs and everything. The the teetotaling Irish singer. Yeah. <laughs> right. Little Billy Mickey. Yes. <laughs> Saints be praised. Yeah. I still love, I sell this this corny joke every year, but there's like a church in Ireland, and the priest there, he's talking about the evils of the drink. Sure. So he takes a worm, he gets some Irish whiskey, drops the worm, and the worm dies. And he looks around, he goes, what does this teach you? And the Irish man goes up, and I wish you could do this, because my... If you drink Irish whiskey, you never get worms. Yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah, very good But point. I think I mean the appeal of Irish music, too. I think it's they're all stories. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, you're telling, like, some good stories, and I think that's part of it. Well, that's one of the reasons I love uh, traditional Irish folk music. You know, and a lot of it's, you know, you think it's, you know, just this happy, joyous music. A lot of it's really dark. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny, you know. So bury me mm-hmm. in my native peat. With a jug of punch at my head and feet, yeah. you know. I mean, uh, you know, they're always talking about, you know, uh, Finnegan's Wake. You know, I mean, it's all this like uh, a lot dark... of songs about the mines and stuff. Yeah, and it's, working. Yeah, and it's picking potato. You know, that, all that kind of stuff. It's you know, but then they have their. I like mainly. I like doing like their drinking songs because it gets everybody up swinging their mugs. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, that's just one facet of what I do. Um, I mean, I do that, and then I'm in another band called the Dungarees. And really, the album that we just came out with that we're promoting uh, right now is is uh, the Soul Rash album. It's a, it's our it's our second album, and it's called Legacy. And um, the, uh, the you know you can download that on Apple Music, um, wherever you get music, Spotify. You can just go if you don't have any of that stuff, go on YouTube um, and and find our music. Again, you know it's it's Soul Rash. And uh, we have uh, Legacy, Wish. Um, I'll have to get this. Don't Give Up Your Dreams, um, uh, which is kind of, this one sounds a little bit like Foreigner, Don't Give Up Your Dreams. And uh, this is a bluesy song called Believe in Me. And then we have uh, Bad Man, which is, you know, kind of like almost bad to the bone type of song uh, <laughs> that, that I wrote. And then uh, Shooting Star, my daughter sing background vocals on. Sounds phenomenal. Uh, that's Sarah and Alyssa McKee. And then uh, Ripple, uh, we have a, a friend of mine that uh, who tours with me sometimes. His name is uh, Willie, and he is an old black fellow who who uh, who likes to sing the blues, and uh, he likes to uh, he likes to drink a lot. But but <laughs> oh, does he now? But how did this band come? Because did you just come? This is the one from Colorado. Yeah. How did this that this is like from Rochester to Colorado? How did this uh, Beshing go? Yeah, well, the way that happened was <clears throat> I used to sing for a band called Grand Jury, and we were like a, prog- you know, prog. We were progressive rock. We did old Genesis and Kansas and Yes and, wow. and songs like that. Yeah, I mean, cool we, uh, you know, we used to, uh, we used to headline down at the arcade, you know, and uh, uh, my buddy, who is the lead guitar player in the band, and one of my best friends and, and a great writing partner, we write songs together, um, and, uh, and he moved to Colorado. Um, and he said, uh, he, he called me up one day and he said, uh, Hey Billy, uh, you know, you should come out here and visit me. But, uh, the thing is, is I've tried every singer in Colorado and they all suck. <laughs> I said, well, surely you can find somebody. He goes, well, what I was thinking is maybe you could, we could record a couple of songs together and see what happens. So, um, that's how our first album, the, uh, the COVID sessions album came to be. And uh, we had so much fun doing the first album. But do you live here? Yeah, I live here. Oh, okay. And now the rest of the entire band lives in Colorado. Oh, wow. So, what do you meet, okay. like, in middle America for your gigs? No. Like, <laughs> well, we, don't, we haven't been gigging, but we've been recording, you know. Um, that's, especially that's why we started with the COVID album. Yeah. Nobody could play anywhere, you know. So we figured, well, let's just record. Let's write and record. Sure. Um, a lot of people did that, uh, I think. And that just felt so good, we just kept going. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, we're talking about... Uh, my buddy Chris Smith, who's the lead guitar player, he's talking about maybe trying to hook on to uh, maybe a, a West Coast tour or something like that. Um, but, you know, it's like up in the air. It's in the works. You know, right now we're just recording. 
Um, we're we're going to start work on our next album, which is going to be the third album is going to be called Trilogy, and um, we I already have a couple songs written for it, and um, and so does he. He's got some stuff that he's working on. So we're going to probably get together over the summer and really you know hammer through these songs. I'll I'll fly out to Colorado for a couple of weeks and. Uh, uh, party with the boys and uh, mm-hmm. we can get some songs down. Watch out for those chocolate bars in Colorado. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely, yeah. man. <laughs> sure. I, I can't be holding it in. I can't. <laughs> I've been holding this one in. As soon okay, as you yeah, said grand ahead. jury. Yeah. You know, I, I'd appreciate being in a band, but I'm glad you didn't pick me for that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that, oh, they, we were a good band. That's back when we used to say court is now in session. We used to say that. Yeah. You didn't come like in robes and stuff. I, I did. I did. I did. The whole theatrical the, the stuff. Way we, the way we started is I'd, I'd put a, we had like a pedestal out there, like a, like a, you know, like a place you'd come out and do a speech. Right. right. Get the gavel. And, and yeah, when I you had a gavel session. in my hand and every time I'd, I'd, I'd hit it, my bass player, player would hit the bass drum, so it'd go, goosh, goosh, goosh. and I had this yeah. nice effect on my voice, and I'd say, order in the court, order in the court, all rise for the honorable grand jury. Mm-hmm. And then I'd kick down the pedestal, I'd throw off the robe, mm-hmm. throw off the wig, and we'd rock and roll. This there is you like, I mean, you, like yeah, it was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I so mean, we, that's like you really like you put on a show. You put on like this is like a it show was, and everything. It was theatrical. It was fun. You know, you know, because we did the old Genesis stuff with Peter Gabriel, and we did, you know, that kind of uh, thing. So actually, one of my my friend's cousin Josh, it's the band, the Waiting Room. Mm-hmm. They would do all the old, they do Genesis early old, but he would do the whole costumes and everything nice. else. Yeah. Did you see? We just lost one of the guys from Gentle Giant. Ray Shulman passed. Oh, was, that sucks. Yeah. That, now that was one incredible band. Yeah, I saw them a bunch of times of. here. Yeah, great band. Great. Great. I know. It's, I got. I mean, each musician was phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, talk about odd. T- you want to learn odd time meters or time signatures? Mm-hmm. They're the guys. So I keep saying it. See, like you got me on that because I just blanked on his name. Like I always point out the drummer from Dream Theater. Is like a really good drum. Portnoy, uh, Mike Portnoy. Yeah, Mike Portnoy, yeah, and yeah, I just blanked on his name. Yeah, he's awesome. But I say you mentioned that to anybody. They were like, "Who do you like for a drum?" Peart, Bonham, which Pine, <laughs> Mike Portnoy. There's so yeah. many. That's the thing about music. You never stop discovering, and you never stop finding these talents buried and everything. That's what I love about music. Though, it's like you could do anything. There's no end well, to it. Yeah, and for me, it's it's a. Uh... It, like um, on the song Legacy, the the song Legacy is yeah, actually sorry, <laughs> it's actually about that very thing. Uh, it's it says wizard. We, I say wizards making art from air. You know, so like basically it. it's a blank <laughs> canvas, and you just take notes and you put them together. Uh, you know, we say notes like armies line the shore, restless children without war. So that's 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 how that song starts. So it's really uh, exactly about what we're talking about is making music. That's my that's my favorite thing to do is just to actually create something from nothing. And I still enjoy like I, I think now really you know God bless technology that we're able like when we have something which nobody expected or wanted like 2020 you can make something of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Unlike me who was like I'm going to write like five books and. I could barely get up and get my laundry, but you could, you know, but you could communicate with people all over the place. Absolutely. And I still like the other fun side of it. My friend Alyssa Trahan, I heard one of her songwriting uh, partners passed away a couple of weeks ago, but she's telling me that, uh, like, for some of her songs, like, he would say, he would just take something and hit something. And that's what I used to like about on the other end. Of creation, like back in the studio. Can you describe your music? Well, I take something and I hit yeah, something. Yeah, he hit something. Like, this, like, what's this thing? It's this bang. He he was hitting a stick on it. But like in the 60s where you didn't have this, you had to make it up. Like for Yellow Submarine, there's John like yelling in another room. Yeah. 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 Which is kind of fun. But I'm glad it's we creative. had it. Yeah. You know, that's what makes those albums so good, those the, Beatles albums. See, that's the problem I think we have sometimes these days is like, I mean, that you can go the other way too far where you're not creative. You can just do it all. You have to try to take best of both worlds. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But we have, you know, and I don't like to promise audiences things that we can't deliver, but I heard he's kind of shy. But Billy brought a guest with him, and now he's out in the hallway. Yeah, I can see if I can try to drag him in. So, uh, hold Tell on. him we're harmless, uh, despite uh, okay. how 
Willie look? His name's Willie, and he's you know he's he's an old black fella, great guy, great. He's the guy who singer. sings Ripple. Anything else? He, he sings. sings on he here? sings Ripple. Well, the way I, well, I met I met uh, Willie in Boston and the uh, in the subway down in Boston, and he was. Yeah, he was doing a little panhandling, uh, you know, drinking some whiskey. And I said, you know, I said, what do they call you? Mm-hmm. He said, uh, he said, my name is Whiskey Willie. And I said, well, that's a great name. I go, I go, uh, you know, I, I, I see you, you got a guitar there, and he played a couple songs for me, and he's, he's got a great voice. And uh, this guy's been around the world. So let me see if I can get him to come in. Hold on for a second, Rob. So, hold on. Great. come what on else, in. What else <laughs> you been going on while we try to get Willie? Uh, in there? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, really? you listening to, to and, uh, you know, listening to those reissues and uh, right now. I'm, I'm, I'm busy out. come on, Dan, don't be shy. Come on in. You know, I'm telling you, whiskey. Uh, come on, whiskey, Willie. Let's come on in now. All right. Oh man. All right. Jesus. I tell you, man. I don't, what time is it? It's early, isn't it? Oh man. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Willie. We appreciate it. Oh, man. How's it going, Will? How, uh, you know. How'd you yeah. get connected up with Billy? Well, I tell you what, I ran into him in the, the, down in the T, down in Boston. I, uh, the subway system. See, I was trying to get up a little money to buy myself another little bottle of tea and a little taste of something. By the way, you guys got a taste of anything around here? Gonna, yeah, well, our, our, well, our tech <laughs> definitely has yeah, something he always does. Around this around place. <laughs> But uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, so so, uh, so I met him and that down there in, in the T, and uh, we just kept in touch all these years. You know, I've heard like you've pretty much met everybody. I've heard you met Elvis, some of these other bluesmen. Oh, oh yeah, Elvis. Any I good story you. about him or anything? Like, oh, really wait, it was sure. You know, I tell you, I was stationed. Uh, I was out in the army over there, you know, in Hamburg, uh, Germany, and there was there was some little band that called themselves the. Uh, the ants or the Beatles or something like that, and they uh, and then they, they uh, uh, one of, one of the boys got got ill one night, and they called me up, and I played with this some timber. Uh, I think one of the guys was uh, Ringo or something like that, and uh, and then, so I, I played a few songs with with, with those boys, help help them out, and then uh, and and done a young man, done a young man, they call him Elvis Presley, shows up at the show, gets up and does a few songs with us too. So how many like if, like in terms of old blues man, you pretty much played with everybody, haven't you? Oh yeah, they uh, when they they go to uh, muddy stinky bottom now. Yeah, I played with him <laughs> and uh, what was his name? Uh, 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 Mississippi uh, uh, Slim Cake uh, Whole Cake. They, I, wasn't it his name or something like that? Loose, jo- J- Loose Jowls Morgan. I think he was. Oh yeah, oh absolutely, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Jowls and the Morgan, yeah. Those guys, you could. Those guys are great and everything. How did you tell us a little about Ripple? I love this song. Well, well, Ripple uh, came to be. That, uh, well, see, I, you know, me and Billy we hang out a little bit, and uh, he, he was in the studio recording something, and he said, he, uh, he, you know, he, he coaxed me into the studio to record it, and uh, it's about one of my favorite things to drink, which is Ripple. I love me some Ripple. Yeah, right it's, up there with Thunderbird. Oh, Thunderbird, <laughs> yeah, Thunderbird. We got the Ripple. And, uh, and, uh, you know, tired to find these days, you know, the Ripple. Now, of course, like I know about Ripple from Sanford and Son. <laughs> if you well, ever sure, could yeah. buy, you ever combine it, like, and make Champipple or anything, or just you like it straight? I like, to, I like to combine it with my stomach. That's what I like to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best. And get combination. diarrhea. <laughs> that's the best it's, it's, combination. It's the best combination I've found so far. But, uh, but I tell you, I've been around this crazy old world, and, uh, and, uh, they, they ain't, they ain't a better wine out there than the Ripple. <laughs> Say, get some Ripple if you can for Easter. We'll try to get you a bottle of Ripple for Easter there, Willie. Okay, well, I, I, I thank you for having me on. And, uh, yeah, we don't want to keep you there. And, I, and, and I'll go get Billy. I want to know what he thought about Elvis. Oh, well, well you, you know, I tell Elvis? you, man, it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a white boy singing the blues. You know, I mean, that's all it was. You know, I mean, uh, he, he didn't write nothing. He didn't write a damn song. See, see, I write songs and I sing songs. Elvis was doing part of my songs. Very true. So... So, you know, but anyway, I, I'm, I was going to get going. Yeah, I know thanks a lot. We don't want to take too much time on you. Thanks for stopping in. Oh, thank you. Uh, you. Show me where that liquor hey, happened. I'll, I'll see you at the soup okay. kitchen. Oh, <laughs> hey, thanks, Willie. Thank you, man. No problem. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that's Willie. I told you he was a character. Hey, yeah, I love these. Something. I love authenticity. Yeah. And, yeah. And he is, he'll tell you the way it is. I'm you know, trying to remember. You know. There's a recent. I've been, I got reading a lot of rock books. There's one person who learned to play the blues. There's an older black gentleman mm-hmm. who used to play it on his porch. Just play. And he mm-hmm. learned from him, an old blues guy. Yeah. You know, they 
because I think too, this I keep using the word authenticity. You have to live the life. It's like the, what's what's said on The Simpsons about the blues. Blues ain't to make you feel better; it's to make everybody else feel bad. Right. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, you know, go with that. But although I, I tell you what, when I'm playing a blues song, it doesn't matter if it's a sad blue. And there's there's happy blues songs too, but I, I, it makes me feel good inside either way. You know, I love I love blues music. I mean. I mean, you know, the thing I always, uh, now, yeah, as I got older, I mean, when we listened to Zeppelin and we listened to all kinds of that older mm-hmm. stuff, I had no idea. I mean, at least I didn't. I mean, we didn't know it was blues they were doing. No. You know, I didn't, we just yeah. thought it was really cool stuff. And then yeah. all of a sudden you start learning what blues is and that it was all based, all that, you know, all that stuff came from blues. And then you start going back and listening to, you know, authentic blues and you're like, wow, it's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see where all these uh, skinny little Englishmen were, right. were, were why were they, they were digging that so much. Yeah, because it's great music. And, I mean, they they uh, they did the best um, snatch, grab, and improve that I've right. ever heard. I mean, you know, I mean, you, get, you know, guys like Clapton and guys like Beck and guys like Page and... And, and uh, you know, even Paul Rogers, I mean, they, they, they did some great You go more music. Alexis Corner Blues Incorporated, like one of the first John Mayall. There you go. Yeah. Good but point. Can you imagine, though, the like how cool it is? Like, now, okay, we're talking blues. I could get out, go, I could go turn on my computer, probably own them all. <laughs> mm. but can you imagine, though, like the excitement, though? It was hard to get. One of your friends would get that import. You'd all gather around and just play it till the... You know, and don't you miss? I miss albums. I, I mean, I think I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna have to break down and start buying my old albums back from I've the record archive. That. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I miss vinyl, and I, I, I think I, we're even talking about our next album that's coming out, the trilogy album. Probably won't be out for a year because we're still in, you know, just in the very beginning stages of it. But we're, we're talking about printing some vinyl on that one. So nice. Well, yeah. that's coming back. I mean, that's Eclipse CD sales. I'm hearing. I mean, I yeah. would say now we don't want to keep. We crazy. don't want to keep Willie. Obviously, he's a busy man. Obviously, yeah, yeah. but I'm sure his opinion on vinyl will be, "What the hell is anything else?" Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you know, yeah, what's a CD? What he, what's download? That's what he would tell you. Yeah, he doesn't know any of that kind of stuff. He knows what a record album is. I mean, he. Doesn't, but I appreciate too the nod. Any of these old English guys, they're not. Oh well, we made this music out there. Like very like I love the story about Clapton. One of my favorite bluesmen's Howlin' Wolf, and one of the mm. greatest guitarists ever is Herbert Sumlin. I think yeah, in my sure. opinion. Yeah, and Howlin' Wolf was an amazing writer. I loved his voice. He was one of the rarities, though, because, you know, you hear, like, I mean, our good friend Willie, he's lived a life. Yeah, yeah, he probably but, hung out with those guys. Yeah, but Howlin' Wolf is Stone Cold Sober, would play, like, three-hour shows. Wow. Very serious. Yeah. But, you know, unlike, you know, some of the other ones, who have been a little, a little juiced up. Yeah. But, so they're playing Howlin' Wolf, and I think I actually have the record where they play Howlin' Wolf in London. There's a bunch of guest stars. Nice. So someone's playing. This is like one of my favorite quotes. So Clapton, they ask Clapton to play. Yeah. And he goes, is Herbert someone playing? Yeah. yeah. He goes, what do you need me for? Right. And, and he's, well, he's right. <laughs> and well, he's, but, you know, but the thing is, is, I mean, you know, everybody wants to have Clapton playing in their blues band. But I always <laughs> love the, uh, I love the comparison between Muddy Waters and Howlin' Wolf. I said, like, Howlin' Wolf would give you three hours, be crawling on the floor, good old Chester Prunette there. Muddy Waters, my brother's song, play at the Pithod Club. He's mm-hmm. looking up there. There's a bunch of musicians playing. He's like, for like, the first time, he's like, where is he? Always talking to women at the bar. Uh, you know? and John Mayall did the same thing when he played last time I saw him. Where we, that must be a blues thing. Mm-hmm. Well, you would know about this a little bit. Where like well, they have the the band, then they're like they play like a couple intro songs. They're like it's the man of the hour. He's coming up now. Yeah. Yep. Well, you know, it's just another day in the office for those guys because I mean they're just so used to being in bars. They just get very comfortable in them. I think. Yeah. I, I got a good story. My mother went to see. Uh, I I was born in Chicago. Uh, but uh, apparently her and my father, who is a bass player, went to see uh, Miles Davis. And he was at the bar drunk. And the band's playing. And she actually approached him and said, 
when I, you know, I came I came to see Miles Davis play some trumpet here, you know, right. and uh, I was appreciating oh. some balls, man. You know? and you know he mumbled something and went back to his drink. But he I, apparently she said he he got him played like three songs at the end of the night. Wow, you know, but know, jazz songs are long songs. Yeah, yeah. In a way, you, you say three else, songs, yeah. it's like two and a half hours. But yeah. I would see in a way too. Somebody might think, wow, you had the Stones to come up to me and say that. Right, I know. I'm going, wow, mom. <laughs> But that's where we owe it all from, too. I mean, I just read read the recent Chuck Berry bio, and obviously the 50s were a special kind of crazy for rock. Sure. You know, riots, all that. But that's what they tried to do. They tried to steal songs to give to, like, white performers. Sure. Yeah. You know, and that's the big thing about Elvis. He might have been great, but they wanted somebody who could sing like that. Well, I mean, I'm not trying to take anything, or I don't think Willie was trying to take anything away from Elvis's oh, performing no. <laughs> or voice. The guy had a, a golden voice, and what a performer. But uh, Willie's right when, when he says he didn't write any of those songs. You know, so he, I mean, for, for me, a real musician's musician, uh, I mean, I loved him as a performer and as a great singer. But, I mean, I don't really think that, you know, I'm more of a writer myself. So yeah, I, I have more utmost respect for people who write their that's own That's like music. Brian Jones say he had no respect for anybody who didn't play an instrument. Yeah. Well, he would have <laughs> given me a bye because I do a podcast, mm-hmm. Wink. But, right. like Chuck Berry, Chuck Berry said, you know, you have to listen to every one of my lyrics. You know, it, and I respect that because otherwise, yeah, you can have like a vessel. Mm-hmm. But, like, for a true musician, it's like, how do you get along with Willie, though? Because this is like... You know, what is your chemistry with him? Well, it's great because, um, you know, a lot of times Willie will just tell me, hey, you know what, play it like this. And I just keep my mouth shut and I play it like he wants me to play it. You just, just defer to him. You I know. defer to him, man, because he, he knows better than I do. He's been He's been around this world, you know, ten times where I've been around it once, you know. Yeah, I didn't want to ask him his age. I don't want to. Yeah, uh, no, I'm not going to have him. You know, he's you know, he, he gets cramped. He's, he hasn't had his first drink yet today. <laughs> Wait a second, it's not dude. Yet. I just think that, it's like the Keith Richards line when he was in Jamaica mm-hmm. working with the reggae guys, and he's like, I couldn't believe these guys. They light up a joint as soon as they wake up. Just pause. I wait at least 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we rag like a little bit like I make fun of Greg about Billy Eilish and stuff. And what, I wouldn't want to say I would ask you instead of uh, you know what? really, but what about like, <laughs> okay, tech stuff like here now, like your thoughts on just people who were sort of like, I don't want to say like, you know, artificial, but just no really musical talent just getting up there. Greg has some things to say on this. Well, I I'm, I've never been wow. crazy about guys like Billy Idol who didn't write their own music. He's just a pretty boy. He got up there. He could sing and he could perform, but not he's, he's no Elvis. You know, and they give him a cheesy name that he, he, I right. think he was kind of made for the record companies by the record companies to go out there and Gary and Glitter, be Billy Idol. Yeah. You know, they even give him a name like Idol. You know, sounds like I mean? a pro wrestler. Right, exactly. <laughs> think about it. You know, it's a, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, Billy Idol. Now, what are your thoughts? Uh, well, you agree with me or no? Yeah, I mean, but there's always going to be that. Yeah, I mean, you had Gary Glitter and. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Billy, I, and you always have these, well, that's what McCartney kind of came up with with Sgt. Pepper. He was going to have a made-up imaginary thing, you know, to you get actually, the business no, you mean, uh, that's one hell You of mean a... the guy who replaced him after he was killed, obviously. Exactly, right. exactly. <laughs> but but, but I, he, that's one hell of an imagination to come up with something like right, that. Yeah, so right. so that, that I respect. I right, think, didn't they know. do it to break the, because the Beatles were so wild, we can't tour anymore, Beatlemania's yeah. insane, let's make a break. Yeah, right. but you know how it was those days. They they would put like in Teen Beat and stuff. There's a story a friend of mine told. They would put their addresses in, and like a, somebody he knew went over to John's house and Cynthia let him let her in. John's out finger painting in the backyard. Yeah. Right. But yeah. can you imagine being in such a bubble? I listened to those They're BBC kind of albums and they had to read Christmas cards and say Merry Christmas to people. And oh, I like George and George is my, Paul is my favorite and you know, all this kind of stuff. But the thing he was talking about, I'm always ranting about Billie Eilish. And that's our joke. We know that. Because yeah. to me, somebody that sits in a bedroom and makes an album, it's not, that's not creating to me. I, I don't know. There's no hard knocks. There's no going out and touring. There's no going out and playing bars and getting your ass. I don't know. It just seems like it's a, it's a shortcut and it's a kind of a, 
less less meaningful way to do it. Well, there's to a me. term. River Lynch used it when he was on the show, and I forget what it's called, but it's like manufactured stars. Yeah, and more I'm or not going to take away from like Taylor Swift. I think she's got a lot of talent. We share birthdays, so obviously I have a little kinship. Well, but she is her touring. parents really pushed, yeah. you know, her parents, yeah. and they had connections, and they really pushed. So it's mm-hmm. anytime you hear, like, well, they came from the gutter and they didn't make anything, a lot of times it's just manufactured, mm-hmm. you know, and that's how it's, that's the biz. I think but, Britney Spears kind of started that stuff, too. Yeah, yeah. but now, now Britney, she's more of a performer than right. Taylor Swift. She does write her songs, yeah. so right. I have respect for that, and that she's uh, and she's got a great voice, and she can really play the guitar, and she's, you know, so, I mean, she's a real talent. But I read Noel Monk's book about when he was manager of Van Halen, mm-hmm. and they said, like, what you had to do, like, fair warning was a little darker, mm-hmm. so it wasn't really selling that well, so what did you do? You had to bribe the DJs. Yeah. With various mm-hmm. stuff, and then Sticks they would did play. the same thing. Yeah, you have, you know. So I heard all about Bribe Sticks. Them with cocaine. I heard all about Sticks. Yeah. Well, it depended who you yeah. were. Yeah, you know. But like, yeah, go. Yeah, exactly. But that's what Snow they blind. did because they were looking at they were looking at Fair Warning. Yeah, it's a dark kind of album. I love jazz. that album. I, oh, it's yeah, pro- I would put that. I would say their first album still my favorite. That might be number two. But they had to go bribe DJs, so they would start playing it. Mm-hmm. So that's just, I mean, it's the nature of the beast, unfortunately, how the industry is. But, like, it had to be, like, in those days, like, in the 50s and 60s, like, reading Fats Domino shows caused riots, reading Bill Wyman's book on the Stones in the 60s. Every show was, like, a riot. You know, like, the one in Rochester, where they had, yeah. Keith was calling us lame because they had to stop the show after five gigs. Yeah. Yeah, that's like well, look at what roll. happened with the Beatles in the Philippines and all that. Manila and, you know, freaking death threats and whatever else was going on back then. Yeah, that whole Jesus thing, the Beatles are bigger than Jesus. Yeah. Lennon. Well, you know, Lennon was right at that point in time. Nobody, Nobody understood, understood what he meant. What he meant. Yeah, yeah. See, I mean, I understood what he see, meant. the problem yeah. was, it was like... It's like, you know, that Jack Crick stuff. We all know Jack Crick if you don't think he did it. Whenever you've gone to shows, like especially in the 80s, when uh-huh. you ever anybody give you those pamphlets with the little oh, things sure, about going right. to hell, yeah. that's like, he was a cartoonist who did that stuff. But what John was just saying, you know, but he, you know they heard the word Jesus. Mm-hmm. And hello, Jesus. He just meant more popular, very literally. He meant more popular. That's what he was saying. saying. Yeah. But people, I think, you know, people want to have... Throughout all our years, people want to have stuff to complain about. They don't want to listen. And if you really want to dig into that, he was probably trying to say that people are losing religion. Right. Maybe that's what he was getting at, is that, you know, we're so important, but what about, you know, we're we're more important than probably the most important thing that you should be thinking about. Right. Yeah, I think he was trying to say something like that. I I remember the press conference, and he was like, uh, like, I wasn't trying to say we were bigger or better. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, he had to try a little damage control after that. Oh, definitely. A lot lot of people were burning the Beatles albums in the (laughs) street and everything. And having said the Billie Eilish rant, to this week again, <laughs> I, our fans expected. I, I was watching some show. Now I can't remember the show, but it was about this guy, you know, and he was getting dressed up, and he was like a Wall Street dude, and you know, but he was kind of like it was like one of those police procedural shows, and he was gonna abduct his. I don't know. Anyway, but the point is, he's a narcissist. He's kind of a narcissist, and he's getting all ready, and he's hot, you know perfect looking and whatnot. And some cool, really cool song was playing, and it had the subtitles, and I'm, I'm, I was doing something, so I thought, wow, that song's cool. So I went back, and I'll be damned, it was a Billie Eilish song. So there you go. So she got me. Damn it, she yeah, got me! Yeah, well, I, you ah! know, say what you want, and I agree with you about, you gotta, you, you know, I mean, you can't really sing the blues until you've lived them, right? right. You know what I mean? And that, that, I think that's what your point is, right? Yeah, I mean, if you're really, and, and there's just no, it, it's kind of like handing a kid everything without having him work for it. No, it's my you snarkiness, know. my, and nobody gets the reference, because I mean, I love the film Ghost World, mm-hmm. but like for being a music person, the whole blues hammer thing, when I saw it, I almost fell off the, uh, you know, don't, you haven't seen it, I take I it. No, I have not, no. Oh, it's about, so there's a, he's a guy, he's like a record collector, and he okay. like meets this girl, and they, she's go, they're going, he wants to see this old blues man, be like Willie. Yeah. But now imagine Willie playing at a sports bar. Right. <laughs> so he's got this old album. He's like, there's only like 10 in existence. I want him to, he'll be shocked to see it. So there's this old blues man, and he introduces her, number one, The Devil Got My Woman by Robert Johnson. And oh, she yeah. plays Great it over song, and yeah. over and over. But they go out to see him. He's playing. They're all talking, drinking. Mm-hmm. And this woman comes up to him. Have you ever seen Blues Hammer? They're really great. So 
the blues man stops. I don't know his name. He's just thank you. You know, now it's polite. Yep. Then the blues, we're going to get down with some authentic Delta blues. <laughs> so they start, we've been plowing and making cotton all night long. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> everybody's dancing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds good, man. I'll no, it's actually ghost out. I really like it. It's mm-hmm. like, it's one of those, I watched it mighty, many, many times. It gets it. Yeah. <laughs> gets yeah. us weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> I'll check it out for sure. But what if you're like, you're somebody too. I know you're doing all this. Is yeah. there any music you'd want to try you haven't yet? I think you've tried everything pretty much. I really have. What And, you know, I keep on falling back to my the roots of my 70s and 80s rock and roll. I mean, and that's what this Soul Rash album is all about, the legacy. It's, uh, you know, my guitar player called me up and he goes, you know, my, my buddy out in Colorado, and uh, and he goes, he goes, you know, these albums that we're recording right now are going to be our legacy. Right. And I go, you know, you're absolutely right about that. I mean, when we're gone, I mean, you know, this our songs will live on. And then uh, and I and I call him back the next day. I go, hey, how about calling the album legacy? And I didn't hear anything for a second. He goes, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Well, I know so, you're doing like the one band that does do the 70s and 80s in the one band. I thought you did like one cover band sort of thing. Oh, yeah. in a mix, yeah, that's mostly '80s stuff. Oh, it's yeah. '80s and, stuff. And, 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 and some, well, there is some '70s like REO and things like that, mm-hmm. and, and Foreigner. But yeah, I mean, that stuff still seems to work. I mean, well, and I enjoy playing it because it's just they're just good songs. Well, what yeah. it is is I, 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 I'm there's a there's a market for this music, right? And so we're writing stuff that we want to hear. You know what I mean? If I was, you know, if I was a listener, what would I want to hear at my age? Um, it's right on this album now. You know what I mean? And it's right on our first album. So, um, you know, we haven't changed. We we still like making the same music that we did back in the late seventies and early eighties. Is when we were really peaking. Right, you know, right through through almost all the eighties, we were around making music. And uh, you know, it just it just feels good to. To, to just put this at, you know, we got CDs. You can swing by my store down in Henrietta. It's called the Vacuum Center and pick up a CD if you want to. Or you can, I think Don't, you can order my He's sucking Amazon. you in right now, folks. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's right, man. No, uh, you can get a whole bunch of goody stuff down there. Like, otherwise, oh. you know, get yourself a vacuum when you get a CD. And he, <laughs> and he won't hose you. Exactly. <laughs> I will not. But there, we can sell cleaning supplies and, you know, I mean, everything from, you know, when there was that big shortage of toilet paper. I was selling it by the case out of there. And so I'm, you know, but anyways, <laughs> all that aside, it, it comes in handy on chili. Night. It does. It does. <laughs> You're cleaning up on the bad music now. Exactly. And good... No, I'm, you know what I picture too? I want to hear music sometimes. It reminds me of like when I used to be a kid and I would get all excited. Well, look who's coming to town. Look who's coming to town. You'd have like my mom, <laughs> I could be in school. My, I'd cut class yeah. and my mom would go yeah. down to buy tickets for us. Yeah. You know, we could play because they were like, oh, they went up to $12 now. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine. But that whole feel like when you got all that anticipation the whole month, you'd be playing the band songs. Then yep. you go, if you could see through the cloud, a pot at the War Memorial <laughs> would help. <laughs> Now, which, could, what's the first concert you saw at the War Memorial? Oh, you, you know, remember? it was Ozzy. Actually, was that's actually, how oh. you read my mind. Mm-hmm. Because the, hmm. the first concert I saw at the War Memorial was Ozzy's Diary of a Man. And it was the day before Easter. Oh, okay. And this was two weeks after Randy Rhodes died. Oh, wow. So and, they had Jakey e. Lee No, what or? it was, was the, the story goes, and now we'll I get into it. I once on the road. We won't get into this because I don't, but there's like some theories, like Rudy Sarzo, Don Airy have theories that it might have been like a little more with the plane ride than just a practical joke. Hmm. But here and there, you can't bring Randy yeah, back. Who, who really knows? Yeah, but, but you can't bring him back, unfortunately. Right, yeah. But the, the story goes, Ozzy obviously was a wreck. They were very close. Now, the reason they kept touring was Sharon thought Ozzy would just go to pieces they did so they brought in bernie torm at first Mm -hmm. and the problem was with him he's a really good player but he's like a blues man he didn't really fit now reading rudy rudy sarza's book riding the rails Mm -hmm. he said that by the time the rochester show now ozzy was sick for this shit you could hear his voice Mm -hmm. but he said bernie torm really hated this show this was really good but at the same time brad gillis was behind the stage he was going to come next he was they want more like a rock guy right so i saw ozzy the deep and you know how you talk about okay like urban legends and stuff mm-hmm. the big rumor was going around ozzy was going to bite the head off at easter 
<laughs> People don't get it. I mean, what does Ozzy say during your show? God bless. But it was great. But I'll show you. Like, back in the day, I had friends who their parents wouldn't let them go to, like, see Ozzy or these shows because of all the stories they heard about. Oh, that's some crappy parents. Which, so. which sucks, too, because yeah. I had friends who <laughs> But you know, Ozzy, when he played here, there was, that show, there was a show on 31, that music show. This mm-hmm. is the only recording of Randy Rhodes playing. Yeah. Yep. That was uh, Weez's live show. He used to have a show on TV. It was on 31. Yeah, right? it was, it was like, on 31. Was... And uh, and it was only around for maybe a few months. Yeah, but, but my it, brother, yeah. I was like, you know, oh, if I knew you, if I knew you liked Oz, you could, you could cut it out and met him. I'm like, you don't listen to me, do you? Right. <laughs> Somebody gave me a really cool bunch of VHSs, and one of them is, a, is like this Ozzy Osbourne thing. And it's not... I watched it. It's not like some record produced thing. It's like a privately done retrospective or something. But it's really, really good because it's not flashy or anything. It's it's really, really good. They're releasing Live Evil with Dio now, 40th anniversary. Oh, yeah? They're gonna have, it's gonna have like you know remastered booklet and everything. What was now? You weren't in Rochester like for the Memorial Days, were you? What was your first concert I, like? There? I was in and out of here, but when my first concert there was uh, the Doobies. I saw the Doobie Brothers, and it was like you know. Uh, Wow. Uh, it was like early, early. Oh, see, I saw stuff. them with Joe Walsh after the pretty much everybody left. Right. But I mean, I, you know, I think now they're doing the 50th anniversary, but it's Michael McDonald, Tim Johnson, at least some of the big names and everything. Yeah. yeah. But we can't, we'd be remiss. We have to talk a little about horror films just because I've seen you posting all yeah. that stuff. Oh, mm-hmm. I love horror. Yeah. What do you think, though, now you've been post? What do you think of like all these sequels and remakes? You seem like you're fine with them. Well, I'm okay with, uh, especially um, if they're going to do a good job with it. You just don't come out with a crappy version of the first one. You know, that's, I, you know, I, I don't, I want to see better. Just make it better. Now, the the new Evil Dead one that's going to be coming out. Evil Dead Rises. Yes, Rises. Um, got 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. So that's, yeah, that's, that's saying a lot for me. Uh, I mean, because I'm a huge fan of the whole series of movies the Evil Dead stuff. I right. love that That's stuff. One of the the moment you might know it. I think it was okay. It's, it was in the second one. Mm-hmm. And I love how it was like Sam Raimi was like the combination of Romero and Three Stooges. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. There's the evil force. <laughs> there's the evil force looking for the cabin. It's going around, and then mm-hmm. you realize it's lost. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's and the hand he starts busting the plates over yeah. his head because his hands possessed. Clado, <laughs> Nick. <laughs> <laughs> But he got both of, like, and, trying, and I love, like, outlaw filmmakings, I call where you have to, like, you have a low budget, and you mm-hmm. have to, like, it's like all the goo and everything. Yeah, absolutely. And that, and that first one with Sam Raimi, I mean, they were just, tra- they were tying cameras to ropes and swinging them through, the, they were doing whatever they could make. Gorilla filmmaking. They had to create their own <laughs> yeah. stuff. Did you watch Ash vs. Evil Dead, the series? Uh, oh, yes. An- amazing. Great, great. Did See, you, have you go, watch that? I, yeah, it's really good. I haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, it's phenomenal. I, I go into that always. I like, you know, expectations sort of because I'm going to please. But then I was blown away by it. I was like really glad. Where, yeah. What's that? Is it out on You get it on video or anything, oh. I think. I think I'll two or three. Ash vs. Yeah. Evil Dead. Yeah. Oh. yeah, it's really good. And Lee, Ma- Lee Majors shows up there oh, and, wow. as, as his father and stuff. <laughs> and they do like a little hint. Uh, what, what, what do they say? Something about, yeah, well, we can always rebuild it. You know, type right, of thing. You know, right, they did, right. did like some little uh, Easter egg, I guess is what you call it today, right? Well, yeah. Um, because it is. Which Easter. I just watched Night. I've been watching Night of the Creeps again. Which oh, to me, it's like, yeah, that's. A but great it's one. like you could you could tell somebody who are fans who's everything's like a tongue in cheek reference. Mm-hmm. But it was really good. But so you're okay. You optimistic for these? You have anything you really want to see out of these? You put a whole stack of them out. Oh yeah. Well, I mean that whole stack. I want to see. I mean, I I, I see. Even that Saw. Only... I mean, Saw's got to be a little. Uh, yeah. God. You know, I'll be honest with you. It's the Saw series. That just happened I've to be seen in that block. But, the... um, I like the first one. Yeah, know? the first one was good, and the second one was, eh, and then it just got to be more. You get the same to the thing. part where the guy's been dead for the last three movies and it's mm-hmm. still doing stuff. Right. Right. And it's the same thing with Friday the. 13th. Yeah. I don't care to see another one of those. It's just a, a, a slasher guy going around with the, the you know, it's the, the the death count ones. I like I like like uh, when when I first saw Nightmare on Elm Street, it scared the shit yeah. out of me because it was like. I thought the fourth one was it the dream something dream that was, that was dream good. warrior warriors yeah. was three yeah. that was good yeah. I great remember was, you, got, I, that you was ever go excellent. you again I, you were in Chicago partly but for us like when we were younger Stone Ridge Theater. 
the midnight movies. And I, I like, I wish somebody would do like midnight movies or even do, it would be awesome. Like have movies, have a band play, yeah. like maybe at 11 for an hour mm-hmm. and then have a midnight movie. But during dream warriors, okay, we go in there mm-hmm. and we saw it twice in a row. Our friends came back. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, the one part where they're going, okay, 10, nine, eight, Somebody blew an air horn. <laughs> I think the cinema did that a long time ago. I know the Coronet Theater on Thurston Road. I saw a Magical Mystery Tour there and Reefer Madness or something like at midnight. See, they back in the do day, that. and yeah, I remember yeah, going yeah. to see the song means the same yeah. um, at midnight and and going, "Wow, this is amazing!" Okay, I have the best story for that one. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So our good friend, the Baron Steve Litvak, he's a big <laughs> guest on the show. So yeah. he goes to see it. He's on acid. Oh. He goes, oh, yeah. he notices Robert Plant's uh, Percy. Yeah, yeah, right. He's freaking out at it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they had them all. They had Song Remains the Same, yep. The Wall. The, but I would love if somebody, like, has a theater out there and he wants, you know, have a band play at 11 for an hour and then show a cool movie. Yeah, have, like, a Zeppelin cover band play and then show the song remains the same yeah but would willie show up like for a blues movie or is he like one of those difficult... well you know the thing is is all you have to do is add, offer willie a bottle of anything and he'll be there <laughs> <laughs> yeah we had a little line coming up to the studio <laughs> here's some witch hazel I, don't know. Exactly. I think he's out there panhandling right now but anyway so yeah but uh, i think that's a brilliant idea i think if uh, you know what's that old theater down there uh, downtown uh, at the cinema yeah, the cinema. They were open, yeah. too. And actually, they yeah. really, like, I'm involved with the Submarine School of Music, Ben and Katie Moore, a great organization. Yeah. They would put on, before, of course, the C word in 2020, mm-hmm. they would do, for, like, benefit shows, they did The Point, which was really cool. And they sort of, and Michaela Davis, Kurt Johnson, all of them, they acted it out. Nice. But they did Nosferatu, and they played along Nosferatu. Nice. But then I want to, like, I think if we could combine that stuff, I think people would really dig it. That's how I think. I think there's a big market for that. And I'm big for anything that'll, it. like, push music, give more music jobs. And everything agree. else. And I think all you need is you don't need, like, 100,000 people, like, for a crowd. You just need a bunch of people who dig it. Mm-hmm. That's all you need. The yeah. trouble is, you got to get people to go out to those things. Yeah. And more and more. More and more like me. I mean, I'm going out. <laughs> I mean, I admit, like, this one True. thing I do the show, I try to promote all the bands and everybody I know, but I just can't go out as much anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like. I'm like hanging like by a thread. I feel like Willie before he has his first drink. <laughs> I just went through that kind of last night. I worked all day and I could have just, I would like to have gone out someplace, but I was just too beat up. And then I had to be here. So. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you're screwing up all my fun. <laughs> yeah. That's what you're here for, style. to be the sidekick and to ruin your life. No, uh, but so he, I remember the old days, I, I, to become one of those people, like last night I was talking to a friend going, remember, like, we just, Billy and I were talking about this before the show, remember the old days, we wouldn't even start playing until midnight or one, you know, you go on, now it's like, okay, is it is it 8 o'clock? I think, I think <laughs> Buffalo I miss still Lord's, does that. Though. You know, yeah, yeah. I'm more Buffalo's into like, a I'm bitch, more into Lord, yeah, there. I mean, you gotta <laughs> play until 4 o'clock in the yeah. morning. Yeah, like, what I used to hear, maybe it's different now, this is a little while back, I used to go up with Fox 45 for like house shows. They do a lot of house shows there too. Mm-hmm. But like for now, it's like, I can't do it. There were those days where like you'd run into friends and go, well, who are you going to go see now? Well, so-and-so's playing at the Little and go down to Abilene and then such and such is down to the Bug Jar yeah. and you go see four different different styles. Now I'm like, Oh, like the last couple of days, my friends were in town. Mm-hmm. There are shows and I go, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, getting old's a bitch. Yeah. Ask, ask, ask Willie. Yeah, yeah like but it. I think Willie's one of those guys, if I met him when he was like 10, he'd probably look like, the, yeah. like Walter yeah. Brennan. He'd still have the same, uh, you know? he'd have same rough voice. You ever right. like, think like, like a Walter Brennan, those type of guys, they were born looking <laughs> like that? You ever see Walter Brennan in older movies, though? He, he, he was actually pretty... Pretty spry. <laughs> really? That's yep. shocking. He was I've born in, old? I, no, I've seen him in some <laughs> old movies and he's pretty good. So, well, so thanks. I mean, for, this has been really fun as always. Yeah. Especially bringing Definitely. a really special. I always love when we can get like really like living legends. Yeah. And I know he seemed like a little trepidatious, <laughs> but I didn't think like, I don't think he hated our guts or anything when he came on. <laughs> well, he, he'll, he'll let me know. 
<laughs> he's out there complaining yeah, about a, he, the, the $10 cup of coffee. He, he is, he is, he's a whiner. If, we, <laughs> if I had Mad Dog flavored peeps, I would have given it to him. <laughs> so you said something earlier. It got me thinking right away of blues songs. So you said I was born in Chicago. So I was sure, thinking, yeah. I was born in Chicago, 1941. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. you could write a song on the spot. You absolutely <laughs> could, could do that. It would be like yeah. something, you know, maybe down the line, take like a blues album, put like a, try to do a style from all different parts of the country, like yeah. how Chicago blues are different from St. Louis blues. Absolutely. From Mississippi yeah, blues. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I wrote a blues song. Uh, I, I had this other album out. It's, uh, it's the Dungarees. And oh, yeah, called, we have to, oh, the good old Dungarees. How's sure. the leprechaun mascot doing? Oh, he's doing good, man. It, uh, Liam is his name. But uh, I do a song called uh, Midnight Moonshine, and you can also look that up on Spotify or Apple Music or anything. Uh, but just you gotta you gotta type in uh, Billy McKee and the Dungarees to be able to find the stuff. Oh, Otherwise, yeah. you get Levi Jeans or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, basically, it's it's an old it's like an old blues song. It goes, uh, you know, uh, let's see, uh, it's headed down to Memphis, you know, and a, I, yeah, I can't even remember all the lyrics, but uh, I, off the top of my head, but. I took, think took the, the midnight train you know what to you Memphis. Do, if like yeah. you're doing something with Willie, if he doesn't throw a bottle at you because you messed up, <laughs> but then he'd be you made me waste that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that was great having great having you. Now I guess you're gonna play a song for us. Yes, I am. Um, this one, uh, I'm gonna play this acoustically live here. Uh, but this is on the uh, new Soul Rash album. Where can you get that around here? Uh, is it well, you can you stuff? can uh, either stop by my store. I think you can get them on Amazon. Okay. Um, or you can uh, just download the music uh, from your favorite wherever. I find okay. you holding the Soul Rash thing. I also feel like I'm itching. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you're you're, you're itching <laughs> to hear it. <laughs> so uh, you have to be used to the bad attempt at humor right now. <laughs> it's like okay, what's green and wiggles the tips? Elvis <laughs> parsley. Well, the, actually, the, the the reason we call it Soul Rash is because we weren't able to get together and make music, and I, we felt like there was a rash on our soul, and that's why we actually originally. So to, that's, that's where deep. the name came from. I so love the best names. Are, to me, the best names sometimes are things that just it's like they just. Pot, all of a sudden, you know it's right. right. It's like you're thinking and thinking and thinking. It's like yeah. it's right. But what do you now? So, so yeah, song. this next song is going to be um, it's going to be uh, shooting star, or uh, some people will call it you hit me like a shooting star, and it's basically the the travels of a woman's soul. Um, and uh, I have my daughters uh, on the uh, album singing background vocals with me, Sarah and Alyssa McKee, and they're twins, and they. They, their voices sound angelic on the album, but I'm going to do you an acoustic version of it right now. So, uh, all right. Well, I just think you take it like, is Willie staying in town or is he going? Because while, you, while, you, while you're playing, <laughs> I'll take him down to the liquor store while you're playing the song. Just Absolutely. Our treat on the carnival. Okay, sounds good. All right, well, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what. You go get, get Willie, and, and I'll go grab my guitar, and we'll get playing. Okay? Awesome. Right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Come Billy McKee, coming. coming up. Okay, thank you. See Rings of fire, my angel with broken wings, floating through the atmosphere. And as she walks the wire between good and evil things, she's off to explore the galaxy. Like a shooting star Lost inside your light Now I'm wondering where you are Don't want to be alone tonight you Hit me like a shooting star Captured by your light Now I'm wondering where you are Don't want to be alone tonight And like I never seen, she flies through her world of broken dreams. Then back through my fantasies. I 
across the Milky Way and twice around the moon. Back to her mansion, my sorceress of passion, baby. You hit me like a shooting star, captured by your light. Now I'm wondering where you are. Don't want to be alone tonight. Hit me like a shooting star Lost inside your light Now I'm wondering where you are You don't want to be alone tonight Back on earth where you were meant to be Somehow you made it through all the space to breathe Now you are my world You are my galaxy Our love will carry on Carry on for eternity yeah. You hit me like a shooting star Surrounded by your light Now I'm wondering where you are Don't want to be alone You hit me like a shooting star Wrapped around your light Now I'm wondering where